Wow, guys, I have the worst timing, I swear. I wrote the script for this video before Solana had that huge network outage yesterday. But alas, that is not my biggest worry about Solana, because I think they will fix that bug and move on, just like they did in the past. Instead, my biggest concerns is the VCs, man. Maybe you've seen this graphic floating around, which was made by Masari, showing that Solana has one of the most egregious insider token concentrations in all of crypto. But is that the whole story though? And if so, should we as sole investors be worried? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the facts and I'll also share why we may see both $1,000 sole and $70 sole in the future. So if that sounds interesting to you, then strap in my friend and let's roll the intro. Look, before you call me a soul hater, that's definitely not true. I hold soul and I've invested in several of its ecosystem projects like Serum, Mango, and Saber. But this criticism isn't something we should just ignore. I don't want to be a channel that just sticks our head in the ground and ignores potential cons just because we like a project. If we zoom out and take a thousand foot view, this does matter. If a project's tokens are mostly in the hands of whales and VCs, we retail guppies are really at their mercy and the token price can be more easily manipulated. So when I saw all these criticisms, I was kind of worried and wanted to take a closer look. Specifically, I wanted to evaluate as many hard facts and numbers that I could find and formulate my own prediction as to what that means for the price of Seoul long term. That's what this video is for. I'll share with you details such as what rounds they've raised, from who and for what price, do they have unlock schedules, and why did the team opt for less transparency rather than more? Oh, and as I share with you these findings, if there's anything I missed or got wrong, please let us all know down in the comments below. Okay, so starting from the top, just how much soul do insiders own anyways? Well, per this Masari chart, insiders own a whopping 48% of soul tokens. That is a massive amount compared to Ethereum, Cardano, Tezos, heck, even EOS. And all things equal, we don't want this to be the case, right? The less insider concentration, the better. But let's dig a little bit deeper. Like how is that 48% broken down? Because insiders are a pretty general umbrella term after all. If we look at this Binance research report from mid-2020, we can see a more detailed breakdown of Solana's token supply. There was actually multiple different types of sales, plus some tokens reserved for the team, foundation, and community. If you take the seed sale, founding sale, validator sale, strategic sale, and team allocation and add them all up, you get 49%, which I believe is how Masari calculated their insider's percentage. Now there's a lot of details here, but I boiled it all down for you into this table right here. It shows the round, the date, the price of Seoul, and how much total in USD was raised. My biggest takeaway is, oh my goodness, when Seoul hit its recent high of $215, these insiders would have been up 800 to 5,000 X their initial capital. Wow, that is crazy. But those rounds were all from 2018 to 2020, and there's a more recent round in 2021 that's been under a lot of scrutiny lately. It was a private token sale to VCs such as Andreessen Horowitz, Polychain, Alameda, and Multicoin. That's pretty normal to be honest. They wanted the support of some of the top investors in the crypto space. I get it. But what people didn't like and what the rumors were saying was that the team sold those tokens to VCs at around $3 when the price on the open market was around $40. That is a ginormous discount and of course left a bad taste in our mouths. We don't know if they had a lockup period, what the actual price of the sale was, or any of the important details really. And these facts are critical because it could give us a sense of how worried we should be about insider selling pressure and when to expect it. Actually, this is quite funny or sad might be the better word because did you know that the Solana team used to release transparency reports sharing with us what they were doing with their tokens? That was awesome of them and should be widely applauded. But then they stopped all of a sudden at the end of 2020. And now they wanna be more private and mysterious with that information. Probably out of greed because they wouldn't be able to raise money in those without the public getting outraged if we knew the exact details. I mean, I get it, but as a retail investor, I don't have to like it. By the way, here's another way for you to evaluate the extent of their insider control. Just go to Solana Beach Block Explorer and you can click on supply up top 
then scroll down to the wealth distribution overview section. You'll see that almost 80% of the total supply is held by whales to hold between 100,000 soul to 10 million soul. I realize some of those may be exchanges or the foundation slash team, but even without those included, the percentage would still be easily a majority. But Kevin, why does this even matter? Why are you even bothering looking into this? Well, because I believe that whale control is dangerous. We're really at their mercy and it makes price action easier to manipulate as well. I prefer healthy and organic price discovery, not something that pumps or dumps at the whims of whales. So far for Seoul, the whales have been benevolent. They have mainly decided to hodl instead of dump. This is confirmed by the fact that Solana's massive token unlock happened in January of 2021, but instead of the price dropping, it actually went up. Apparently, insiders didn't want to take profits yet, and combined with a healthy bid from SBF and his friends at Alameda Research, it's easy to see how the price could rocket. I'm not sure if there was any backroom coordination not to sell, but I wouldn't be surprised. I could imagine a board meeting where they're like, okay, let's not sell and instead bid up the prices so that we can look like geniuses for investing early. It's gonna be easier to raise our next fund. It will help Solana win the narrative and just build momentum for the project. This is all conjecture, of course, and there's no way for me to prove it, but I honestly would not be surprised. Here's the thing though. If and when they start taking profits, the price could drop immensely. Why? Well, because they own a metric ton of soul and because they got in at super low prices. So even if prices drop a great deal, they would still be in profit. I mean, just look at the internet computer project for a recent example. When their ICP token listed on exchanges, it proceeded to drop 90% in the span of a few months. And that's because insiders saw 100 to 1000 X gains and was like, dude, I'm gonna sell. I don't even care anymore. They took profits ruthlessly and it came at the expense of naive retail investors. While this hasn't happened to Seoul yet, you have to expect for insiders to sell eventually. I mean, it's just normal. Put yourself in their shoes. You wouldn't hodl all the way up and all the way back down either. Especially if the usual game plan is to rotate profits into other investments or return some money to their limited partners. By now you're probably thinking, cool story bro, but what exactly does this mean for the price of Seoul? Well, here's my personal forecast. I think that as long as this bull market continues like many analysts predict, VCs and insiders will continue to hodl and sell very little Seoul on the markets. This means that my peak price for Seoul in the next six to 12 months would be $700 to $1,000, which would translate to a roughly $300 billion market cap near its blow off top. But if and when a bear market comes, I'm pretty sure we will see a double digit Seoul once again. Yep, that means back under $100. If we get the second bull run and Seoul goes as high as I think it will, then I think the lowest we drop is to around the $70 range. But if the bears come sooner than we expect, then I wouldn't be surprised if Seoul tested its support at around the $40 range. I'm not trying to FUD here. I mean, insiders are gonna lock in their profits eventually, and that could lead to heavy selling pressure during a bear period. Now, while that all plays out, we'd probably be super bitter at the VCs in Wales, blaming them for our backs getting pummeled. But it would also be an amazing opportunity to scoop up some cheap soul. You just gotta be prepared to have some cash saved up and conviction to buy when it literally feels like it's gonna go to zero. Oh, and of course, I could be completely wrong with my forecast. What I share with you is based on my gut feeling and intuition from being in the space for several years now. And it's just fun to share these predictions anyways. But hold up right there because I have a chart for you. You know I'm all about the fundamentals, but I do follow traders sometimes just to see their perspective as well. And I came across this great chart by Pentoshi that I think could definitely play out for Seoul. He says that Seoul has gone too high and he thinks that it will likely retest some lower levels. After all, markets have peaks and valleys, which we've seen play out over and over again. So in this chart, he placed two magnets at around the $115 and $95 levels, basically saying that Seoul could retest those areas before moving up again. I definitely could see that playing out if Bitcoin stays sideways or goes down a bit. And then afterwards, we continue our bull season and that's when Seoul makes its move to over $700 like I predicted. Well, at least it's just one possible scenario for you to chew on. By the way, if you can't get enough of Solana related content, then you are in luck because I've made a bunch of other videos about Solana like this one about its pros and cons that I highly recommend, or this one about my top five Solana ecosystem projects to check out. Anyways, I'm Kevin from Coinsider. I can't wait to see you in the next one and cheers.